Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our Courageous Leadership with Virginia Pradhan, training you to lead with courage. Our Courageous Leadership with Virginia Pradhan, it's every single Wednesday and Saturday at 10 o'clock Central Time. We are so glad to have you here. Thank you so much for sending me your questions and your comments. Today, the question that I will answer for you is how? to keep your faith in tough times? That's your question. We all know in good time, it's easier, easy to have faith or to talk about faith. It's easy to see why we believe what we believe and why we try to encourage others to keep the faith when they are um, falling down. But what about periods of uh, prolonged suffering? or surprise attacks. How do we keep the faith in tough times? I pondered this question just a few days ago, talking with Janine, as she said to me, even with all the reading, Bible reading she referred, all the prayers, I am overwhelmed. And I found myself begging God to draw me a line. Nothing, nothing happened, she said. I pray over and over for him to bring relief and change the circumstances. Nothing. And I felt discouraged, depressed, and impatient. Why is God not answering my prayers? Why is he not showing himself to me, Janine said. She had a hard time waiting for God to answer her prayers. That is for sure. I recognize that. I experience waiting for God or the trial or waiting for God to answer my prayers in my life many times. I'm speaking from my own experience and I'm sharing from my own experience. Hope those of you who never read my memoir, Saving My Assassin, you can buy it if you go to virginiapradanabooks.com slash product slash book. You will be encouraged by this book, and you will see how God has been helping me to win and to keep my faith during my waiting for God to answer trials or even horrible circumstances. I experienced a difficult childhood, a cruel persecution in socialist Romania, and here, a hard time in America rebuilding my life from nothing. And even under those circumstances, discouraging circumstances, hard times, I won with God. You can read more in my book, Saving My Assassin, and my memoir will um, help you. So go to virginiaprodanabooks.com slash product slash book, and you can buy there a signed copy. In Romania, as I started to defend Christians, churches, and human rights cases as a Christian attorney, I had a difficult time dictator who dictated declare himself God and require all of us to worship him alone and his socialist government declare me an enemy of the state and my legal work an act of treason. I pray for God. I was frequently arrested, kidnapped, beaten, tortured, placed under house arrest, and I came within seconds of being executed under the orders of Ceausescu himself. You can imagine that during this time, I was praying a lot. I pray that God will stop them hurting me. But still, without a shadow of a doubt, I knew that my life was in God's hands, and in his power, I kept my faith refusing to live in fear of what a dictator or his regime could do to me. God protected me and gave me the power to shine 
for him in that darkness and keep my faith. God empower me to face my assassin sent by the dictator at my law office in Romania to kill me. At only 82 pounds and under five feet tall, I was not match for my assassin, a six ten feet tall man pointing his gun at me in my office. I was fearful and terrified. My knee was shaken. Still, in all of this, I heard the whisper of God share the gospel with him. And I did. At the end, my assassin accepted Christ and left my office as a brother in Christ. God's word saved us both. Years later, my assassin came to my law office in Dallas, Texas, with a case. I didn't recognize him when he came until he showed me his Securitate ID from years back in Romania. And he asked me, as I shared with him, that I'm writing my book to write a chapter in my book, Saving My Assassin. And he wrote a chapter in my book, Saving My Assassin. You will discover in his chapter and in my book what God is doing in our lives. I assure you, it's beyond your imagination. I'm grateful God helped me to keep my faith and share my faith with my assassin. I understand it's hard or discouraging to keep your faith as a Christian now in America. And often you look at the culture and wait for God to answer your prayers. It's hard to keep your faith in those circumstances. But I'm here to tell you that it is possible. Yes, it is. Be encouraged that under persecution in socialist Romania and rebuilding my life here in America, in God's power, I won against many waiting for God to answer my prayer trials. And God wants to do the same thing in your life to help you keep your faith during those hard times. Yes, the feeling that God is not answering our prayers can bring us to depression, isolation, and even distractions, having suicidal thoughts or even more. I will share with you the three ways to keep your faith in hard times. If you need more help after my presentation, please go to virginiapradanbooks.com slash freedom coaching. Tell us what you need and we will help you. We are here to help you. Often our faith is tested during trials and challenging times. When you ask, where are you, God, and hear nothing, that's when you are left to decide. Would you believe him anyway, trusting his character, or would you decide he is not there? He does not care. Sometimes you will take forward steps and backward steps, but the secret is you will grow when your forward steps will become greater. Be patient. Taking the forward step is your faith in action. So be encouraged. Okay, so here are the three ways to keep your faith. Number one, choose to remain faithful to God. Make that decision. Faithful now when you are when there is no visible finish line and no feeling of relief. Trust Christ now for his plan 
for your life when you cannot see that plan. Learning to fully trust Christ and wait for Him, it's not easy. Just think about it. David was appointed king of Israel, but he had to wait many years before taking the throne. Then one of his sons tried to kill him to become king. But during all this time, waiting time, David took his feelings and his complaints to God. And God rewarded him for waiting for God's answer and time. God lifted David out of despair. God set him on the rock. God gave David a firm place to stand. God put a new song on David's mouth. You and I, we can do the same. As you go through the trial of waiting for God to answer your question, prayers remain faithful and God will provide blessings to you too. I assure you of that. Waiting will strengthen your faith. It's not easy, but as you wait, ask yourself, are you struggling with trusting God? Think exercising your muscle of faith in that area. Getting to the next level of maturity in faith requires patience, a time many times of discomfort while pushing forward. It's a hard work. In Revelation 14, 12, we are reminded that this calls for patient endurance on the part of the saints who obey God's commands and remain faithful to Jesus. Revelation 14, 12, remember that. So, for that reason, pray, ask God for his guidance, care, and love that they will help you go through difficult times. Pray for strength, that God will guide you step by step and keep you strong. He is able. Just be patient. Be patient that temptation will come your way to mislead you. But ask God as David did, grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Psalm 51, 12. And be kind to others going through the same hard time or struggles like you. Sometimes the greatest strength we can receive comes from helping others in need. So watch for that. Get inspired. It's another way. When you are feeling hopeless, read about the lives of people who have demonstrated faith in amazing circumstances and ways. The Bible offers us many examples of heroes of faith. Learn from them wisdom and strength and read stories of current heroes of faith too. You know, God still works in people's lives to show his power, love, and sovereignty, not only to them, but to the entire world. Number two, remain rooted in God's word. I can't emphasize too much to you that. When you feel the struggles of waiting is heavy on your back, bury yourself in God's word. That's the best thing that you can do. Read the Bible. Place some Bible verses, encouraging messages from the Bible, wherever you can see them, to read them often. And ask someone you love to pray with you. Your perseverance will be rewarded. 
I assure you for that. Ask yourself, what's the hardest part about keeping your faith in hard times? Take an inventory of that. Exercise your faith muscles in that specific area. It will help you a lot. Number three, surrender yourself with people faithful to God. People who refuse to settle in their relationship with God and career, job, fame, or titles, but they put God first. And because of that, they will encourage you and challenge you to do the same. So, surrender yourself with good friends. Finding those type of friends I know has been hard. But what helped me the most is to focus on yourself and you being that kind of friend, because that helped me very much. You can help many, and they can help you. I assure you that if you apply correctly those three ways, you will be able to keep your faith during hard times. God will help you and reward you. If you need more help, please go to virginiaprodanbooks.com slash contact or virginiaprodanbooks.com slash freedom coaching. Tell us your needs and we are here to help you. Your homework is this. Number one, what's the hardest part about keeping your faith in tough times? Think about writing it down. Number two, are you struggling with trusting God? And number three, in what area of your life? Make sure you write it down. If you need more training or if you need to send those um, uh, homework to us, please go to virginiaprodanbooks.com slash freedom coaching or virginiaprodanbooks.com slash contact. Do not settle for less. We can help you turn your setbacks into comebacks. We had done it before and we are happy to do it for you. Your family and your business, your community or America needs your winning attitude in keeping your faith in hard time to lead courageously. I hope you read my book, Saving My Assassin. You can go and buy a signed copy of uh, uh, um, Saving My Assassin from virginiapradanbooks.com slash product slash group uh, slash book. This book will encourage you to see how God has been helping me to keep my faith during waiting trials or even under horrible circumstances in my life, in socialist Romania or here. Remember that God wants to do the same in your life if you allowed him to do it. If you want to invite me to speak to your events, please go to virginiaprotanbooks.com slash product slash book. You will find it there. A speaking request. Until our next time, Courageous Leadership with Virginia Prodan, each Wednesday and Saturday at 10 o'clock, keep your faith and be blessed. Keep in touch and please send us your questions or everything that you might need. You will find all of this at virginiaprodanbooks.com. Be blessed. Until next time. God bless you and send me your question or your comments. Bye-bye.